The spirit of Walt Disney is alive and well. It just doesn't reside at the house of mouse he built. No, it's Elon Musk taking over the idea of a tomorrow land worth fighting for and Epcot worth believing in. Meanwhile, Disney just can't win as they only believe in a dystopian future. Today, we'll tell you how Bob Iger blew up the ideas, the ideals of Walt himself, and how Elon Musk must be the new Tony Stark. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Pro Channel, where we, as ever, endeavor to explain entertainment, keep you ahead of that culture curve, and explainify the things that just need explaining. We're so happy to have you with us today as we get ready to dive into the issues of Disney having given up on a future, but Elon Musk being the man we need right now to inspire the generations. It's what Disney once did, but no longer under the tutelage, the direction of Bob Iger. Folks, as we get ready to dive in and bring the panel on, click that like button. All about Elon and uh, the Tomorrowland problem. Folks, you'll see what we're talking about in just a moment. For those of you who don't know, they caught a rocket. And uh, this is what we used to uh, go to Disney to see. No, not the real thing, but to be told about what the future might be. This is out of Esme Stallard. It's out of the BBC. Elon Musk's Starship Booster captured in world first. It says Elon Musk's Starship rocket has completed a world first after part of it was captured on its return to the launch pad. The SpaceX vehicle's lower half maneuvered back beside its launch tower where it was caught in a giant pair of mechanical arms as part of its fifth test flight that brings SpaceX's ambition of developing a fully reusable and rapidly deployable rocket a big step closer, a day for the history books, engineers at SpaceX declared as the booster landed safely. The chances of the bottom part of the rocket, known as the heavy booster, uh, yeah, super heavy booster, being caught so cleanly on the first attempt seemed slim. All right, what are we talking about? Well, let's take a look, folks. This is the rocket. And many That's of you have so already seen amazing. this before. It is amazing. Look at that. It it looks like something that should have been in an Iron Man movie. It looks like something that would be CGI. It's it can't be real. It can't be. And yet this is real video of it happening. And and what's incredible about this is first of all, he they they did all of this by sacrificing some aerodynamics as well by attaching those steel air brake plates and making it so that these these two arms can clap together, slap together and hold this thing while it lands cleanly. So that now they can refuel it, reuse it much, much faster. The stacking can happen in an abbreviated, abbreviated fashion, uh, and they can bring them in from whence they launched them. It's incredible. So let's tie this into Disney, folks. And here's what we've got out of the mirror. It says, people gobsmacked, gobsmacked, we tell you, after learning what Disney World's Epcot Park actually stands for. <laughs> this is out of, uh, again, out of the mirror, and it's from just, just this June Paige Freshwater, who has one cool name, is the author. Epcot opened at Walt Disney World Resort in Bay Lake, Florida in October of 1982. But despite it being a popular tourist attraction for four decades, many people have no idea what the theme park's name actually means. It says really? it has more than 25,000 visitors per day. Well, at least it did. But many are just uh, are only just learning what Epcot actually stands for after 42 years. The theme park at Walt Disney World Resort in Florida, U.S., celebrates human achievement, particularly techno uh, technological innovation and international culture. Often referred to as a permanent World's Fair, it opened in October of 1982. And then we've got this. It's covering the uh, Redditors who say, Today I learned the Disney Park Epcot is an acronym. Uh, describing his vision, Disney said in 1966, Epcot will take its cue from the new ideas and new technologies that are now emerging from the creative centrists or centers of American industry. It will not be a community of tomorrow that will never be completed, but will always be introducing and testing and demonstrating new materials and new systems. And Epcot will always be a showcase to the world of the ingenuity and imagination of American free enterprise. Folks, are we starting to see where I'm going uh, with this? Today, around 27,000 guests visit Epcot every day for its rides, live entertainment, restaurants, and to meet Disney characters. Commenting on the revelation, one user said, every person comes out trashed. I mean, tired, <laughs> tired, of course. That is what Epcot has become. Uh, and so I just wanted, as we open the show today, to say, Elon has taken the vision that Walt laid out. Walt was a dreamer. He was a visionary. Walt wanted to turn uh, Epcot into an, uh, a real city. He wanted to revolutionize 
personal transport. That's what Elon is doing. Walt wanted to uh, look to the future, to space, and to all kinds of amazing things that could be done. Elon is doing that. And the Disney company that Walt founded is floundering when it comes to pushing any kind of technology. Epcot essentially now exists as an IP uh, kaleidoscope, and not in a good way, a uh, cacophony of different <clears throat> cartoons and brands that don't really stand together. And then by the time you get to the afternoon, it just turns into the world's largest outdoor bar. That is so, the level of intrigue that Disney has. Jonas? So, so more like an intellectual property community of tomorrow. Yes, exactly. With, <laughs> with a lot of alcohol. <laughs> With a lot of alcohol. So am I wrong, anybody? Erica, uh, what do you think about no, the idea no. that Elon has taken the spirit of Walt and Bob is trying to bury it? Um, I'm kind of shocked. Not really shocked, but just thinking really deeply on that as you were talking. Um, it's sad that they have such an amazing opportunity to combine forces between Disney and Elon and do something amazing. Uh moving forward with uh, Walt's vision and because of the, I guess, animosity between the two, it's not going to happen. And it really sucks because I, yeah, I see a lot of Walt in this. I think he would just be absolutely amazed at this. And I, I'm just staring at that image of the rocket landing and I'm like gosh could you imagine something like that being at Epcot and encouraging kids you know to explore and discover and just get the wheels turning of what they want to do when they get older when they grow up you know Epcot used to do that at least for our generation for Gen X and now it doesn't do that anymore. Well, if I can throw deviate just slightly here, if we if we add in Tomorrowland and the idea of what Tomorrowland was supposed to be in that rocket that used to be in the middle of Tomorrowland, the what what is it? It was the Mars ride. I never got to ride it. I was I'm an East Coaster, but um, it just the idea that Tomorrowland used to actually point Jonas, to. Could you could you go tomorrow. ahead and call it the Astro Orbiters just so we really make the Disneyland folks angry? Is that uh -huh. really a, a I'm sorry, I'm completely mesmerized. That's really a robot. Screen. Yeah, that's that's that's, oh that's Optimus. Optimus. Yeah, yeah, that is that's soon to be my home butler. But he talks uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> what you think about what Tomorrowland is now, and it's a it's an excuse for roller coasters and, and IP rides at this point. Space Ranger spin versus Astro Blasters. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the actual rocket ride that used to be in there, and it was it would show a a, a, a video, a movie uh, below you, and it would be takeoff and landing. Yeah. Uh, what is the name of that culture? Uh, well, uh, w the mission to Mars, yeah, and before one. that, the uh, mission to the moon, or or whatever it was called. And y y y do you remember that attraction? I, I mean, I've seen footage Disneyland? of it, but uh, yeah, yeah it was it, it was phenomenal, right? And and I think now it's a pizza joint, if I'm not mistaken. I wish Vash was here. Yeah, but but but, but you look at that, and and you think about the fact that there was a Stitch ride, and before that, it was. Uh, Alien. Uh, oh yeah, alien the alien, encounter. the extraterrestrial adventure, or whatever it was called. Right. Or yeah. you know, in Space Mountain is about the closest you get. Or the Tomorrowland, <laughs> uh, the Tomorrowland Speedway. Not exactly a Tomorrowland oh, kind of what? idea. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> you you can kill, still get in a centrifuge and pretend like you're going to to or, Mars and Epcot, or a little bit of Carousel of Progress, which they refuse to uh, maintain. So, you know, there's a oh little bit gosh. of progress there. But but you look at this and this is a this is a rocket that True. just landed vertically in, in into the loving arms of some chopsticks. Uh, now, wait a chopsticks. minute, Jonas. Uh, the the head of Sweet Baby Inc called the man who did this a buffoon. So, I don't I I don't know who to believe right now. John, uh, when we look at <laughs> Elon really becoming the real life Tony Stark, how interesting is it that the company that made Tony Stark a household name hates the real Tony Stark. Isn't that, isn't that bizarre? Uh, no, it's, it's not bizarre because they didn't actually make Tony Stark. They purchased Tony Stark and then, Oh, uh, what a great point. <laughs> We're going to come back to that later in the show, folks. <laughs> and not only did they purchase Tony Stark, they purchased the IP that was launched before Disney even touched Tony Stark with the Marvel cinematic universe. So this, uh, is not really surprising whatsoever because under Bob Iger, 
at Disney, they have no actual vision. They just purchase things and run them into the ground after their, uh, I guess, have used them all up for their agenda. That is kind of the Disney uh, theme, uh, as far as I've seen over the past uh, decade or so under Bob Iger's leadership uh, of the company. And uh, I think the reason why they would lash out at uh, Elon or not like Elon so much is uh, they're jealous and obviously he is opposed to their uh, ideological agenda that they are pushing as well. Yep. Ron, you've uh, you've been to Epcot a lot. Uh, what's Epcot lot, like yeah. these days? So Epcot still, believe it or not, is my favorite park. But it's also such, it's so heartbreaking. So the other night I stayed at Epcot late. Um, I was there. I was there live. This was the day after the hurricane. And it was 1030 at night. Most people had left. I sat down. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I sat down on the fountain. I actually sent a picture to Jonas. I don't know if he has it. But um, but I sat down there at the fountain. And I was looking up at Spaceship Earth. Um, the fountain right behind me. And, and the monolith. The, you know, try thing that they have um and i and i was thinking of just how magical that place is and and used to be and what it used to to stand for and then and then thinking about what's so on for the optimism other side. ron no i was i was yes exactly and and i was thinking about what is on the other side of that now Walt statue is there, and if you've ever gone there, you've noticed that hardly anybody walks up to the Walt statue. It's never busy. It's it's which it's extremely strange that Walt Disney is the the idea behind that statue is he was supposed to be overseeing his last final vision that he had when he was alive, seeing the culmination of everything he'd worked for Epcot. And it's surprising that that statue just doesn't have the worst look of disappointment on it because he's looking out over what could be any park in any small city in America. There's nothing there now. It is they can't listen. So listen hold on, Ron. So I gotta push tragic. back against you, Ron. Not every park could have this amount of booze in the evenings. That it's really a feat <laughs> to have that much booze brought in. That's true. Uh, well he again disappointment uh would be you know his takeaway because Lillian never wanted um wanted alcohol in any of the parks but you know this this was my my view the other night, uh, the moon off to the right. Um, and it, it's, this is gorgeous. Okay. The, what they've done here is great when the lights work at night. <laughs> okay. But then you step on the other side of that and everything that the, the communicores, the, the future, the futurism, all of that has been, uh, destroyed. World celebration is anything but anything to celebrate and that is what is so sad you go to communicore hall and it's an insult to the name communicore because it basically looks like a lunch room in uh, an elementary school or even worse than some of the lunch rooms i've seen in elementary schools it's it's it, it it's it's so heartbreaking because of the promise like the the fact that they never actually built a real people mover to move people around epcot is still a surprise to me when they shut down uh, or when they started to wall this off, when it became Walcott, Walcott for five years, starting in 2019. One of my biggest surprises was that there was no announcement of an actual people mover to move people around the space, especially now that there's, instead of future world, there are three, um, what do they call them, districts or whatever, where you have world celebration, world discovery, and world nature. And there's so much walking. I've got some huge and it's the perfect spot for an actual working people mover that's not just a ride um but is an actual way to move people around the park and it's not that difficult logistically to do cost wise it might cost them a little money but disney they became it's it's cheap cut now everything was done on the cheap there and it's that's what's so sad is especially in world celebration that they're calling it world celebration is an insult. It should be world downgrade. I think I don't know, but every, this this picture shows everything that Epcot could be, and uh, if you were on the other side of it, it's just nothing but let down and and disappointment. I mean, Journey of Water is ridiculous. It it could 
it's not even indoors. They couldn't put a glass ceiling over it. They, uh, it, it's, it, they're trying to tie it in with an IP that doesn't really work for the whole idea of edutainment. Um, and, uh, and it's basically just a play place for, for kids that was bigger than it needs to be. It's uh, if they would have done journey of water at the Polynesian, I think that could have worked. Um, oh, sure. well, park, and it's deserving. It it, it's the level, the level of quality is deserving of being at a hotel, not in a theme park. But I, I have a theory about what's going on. And my theory is that places like Disney, uh, that the company has lost its vision of the future. They're obsessed with dystopian fears. Everything's going wrong. There's too many of us on the planet. It's getting too warm. Catastrophe is around the corner. And because of this sort of cult-like belief that has taken over, swept through our coastal quote-unquote elites, we can't have places like Epcot because they no longer believe. And that's why Elon has captured the spirit of Tomorrowland. That's why Elon has captured the spirit of Epcot. That's why Mr. Musk is the new Walt, is because he believes that uh, there's a future worth fighting for. And I think that's fantastic. Whatever we might say about his overall view of the world, he is making uh, huge strides forward for humanity and technology. And that's what I think Walt had always fancied his company to be about, always looking to make progress. And uh, the type of progress that Disney now associates its with, itself with seems to me to be largely regressive. All right, panel, final mm -hmm. thoughts on this topic, and then we'll go to Super Chats. Well, I would say that there's a great big beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day, just not at Epcot. <laughs> uh, they're no longer interested in educating, you know, anybody. They want to indoctrinate. Yeah, I mean, and that's actually messages that are being carried over into attractions. So you, you, you're you 100% on point there. Look, the, the lack of vision is exposing the lack of creativity. And it again, it's like people, you, you can't dare to dream anything anymore. And if you do, you, you'll be, you know, roundly mocked and or shot down because whatever your idea is, is going to be, you know, not in line with the modern neo-Marxism. But um, look. It, it, it doesn't surprise me. I've been saying for a long time that, you know, the, the, the company Disney would be in better hands if it was in Musk's hands. Um, the company overall, I'm, I'm not, not it, it, it certainly isn't something that he has time for, but it would be something that would, you know, really help out uh, Disney fans. Uh, could you imagine somebody of his power re, re, rewriting the direction of pop culture right now? Wow. It would be <laughs> incredible. Um, It'd be a little scary for somebody like Elon Musk to really get involved in in actually creating content. I think that would be a difficult thing with with the way his brain works. I I'm a little fearful of what that would really. Be. Who knows? Maybe he'll be better at government instead. John, I'm I'm actually more optimistic than than Jonas is on this because uh, mainly because he doesn't have to be super hands on, right? I'm not sure how hands on he is with X. He does seem to be pretty hands on with that. But uh, I think a lot of times Elon is about choosing the right talent. I think we saw that with X. He was able to basically remove a lot of the, the bad actors that were working there. He's obviously significantly cut costs there and has vastly improved that uh, platform, I think, for, for the better. And obviously, uh, lots of people are reaping the benefits of that. And obviously, there's still things that need to work out because uh, obviously, we're, we're human. We live in a fallen world. Uh, people make mistakes. People do, do bad things sometimes. Uh, but you can still kind of fix those things make adjustments to that. But I think at the end of the day, Elon seems to be a good person who has an eye out for talent. And I think he would be able to choose someone who does have a vision for uh, the Walt Disney Company and can lead it into the future and kind of uh, is completely contrary to what we see from the vision of the company today, which was uh, fully, fully made aware to all of us during that Reimagine Tomorrow campaign under Bob Chapik's rule, where we found out how they were, as uh, Erica was saying, they're all about indoctrination, and that is what exactly what they're doing, how they were changing, how they greet people, etc. It goes all the way down to that. And I think if you put someone uh, who has a vision contrary to that uh, and is an imaginative person, uh, I think uh, you could have a very, very different Walt Disney Company. And I think Elon Musk would be someone who would be able to find someone who has that talent, who has that vision, and would be able to support them and uh, help them move uh, forward and uh, enact that vision that they have. Absolutely. Let's hope the company can start striving forward because if not, well, they're going to be left in the dustbin as people like Elon inspire. And that's why this, this side will win is because inspiration, inspiring, 
is what will win the nation. Pulling Holly Weird to the sensible center of the mainstream middle where money is made is not easy, but folks, you make it easy to make videos each and every day because sharing time with you is a great honor and we never take it lightly. An attitude of gratitude every single time we have the chance to shine with you. Until the next time, we only ask that you click that like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms. It is the notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. And folks, don't worry about paying any kind of tuition for this free class and how entertainment works. You are on scholarship. Highest IQ on the internet. That's you for sure. Until the next time, we have the opportunity to spend time together, folks. We just ask that you keep learning, keep growing, and as ever, keep having fun.